Welcome to Property Investing with Abby. On today's episode, we're gonna be looking at filling your serviced accommodation unit. But before we go there, my name's Abby Hookway. I'm a property investor, mum of two. I've got a full-time job and I do property on the side. I've done it for the last three and a half years and I've made quite a lot of money doing it and built quite a big portfolio. So now I like to train others and train you guys how to do it because I think property is awesome and everybody should be doing this. Why aren't we all doing it? Because we don't know how and we think some of it's too good to be true but it isn't. So on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about serviced accommodation. Now, serviced accommodation is where you take a property, but instead of renting it to a tenant on a six monthly basis, you rent it out per night, and you can rent it out on booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia, TripAdvisor, you know, these online travel agents. And there's two types of serviced accommodation you can do. You can do holiday let, or you could do corporate contractor. Now, corporate contractor is where you provide, you know, a lot of accommodation for contractors, builders staying away, corporate workers that might be staying in the city nine to five, and then your holiday let, so where you're providing accommodation to people wanting to go on holiday. So today we're gonna look at boosting your bookings for holiday let serviced accommodation and how you can fill it so you can take maximum amount of profit and make lots of money and then do what you want. So here's my five tips for increasing your bookings. My first tip is staging and presentation of the property. This is key. Even if you've got a great property in a great location, you will be dead in the water if you don't have the best photos and you haven't staged it well. We buy with our eyes, don't we? And people are gonna be looking at your property from somewhere else you know, they're not gonna be outside it or they're not gonna look around it. They're gonna be looking with photos. That's all they can see and it's their very first impression. So you have to make sure you get this right. So let's have a look at some in filing. I've just typed in filing and the first one we have is my own holiday cottage there. This is called Ocean Queen. And I don't know if you can see, we've got a lovely picture of the bed, a teapot on there, little teacups there. We've got the towels made. It looks lovely and homely and, it, and you can tell that it's a serviced accommodation. It's a nice holiday place. So that's so important. If we go down to the next one, we've got Downcliff House. Now it's got a beautiful picture. This is actually a hotel, but a nice picture of it. Now if we go down, down again, you can see we've got something that's called the Oyster Catcher at the Bay in Filey. Now this picture isn't as inviting. I've got some sofas and a bit of a wooden table. I don't know if I'll click into that. The next one we've got is called the Artist Retreat. I can see like an L-shaped sofa. I can see, you know, big doors open, quite inviting. Again, you've got to really paint the image and that first pitch you do is critical. Let's go in mine and have a little look at the snaps and we'll do one of the others so you can see what I mean with staging. So it's thinking about what the guest wants and making it look amazing. So look at this, that's the first picture what you could see on booking.com. You can see the bed, you can see we've got um, a dressing table there, we've kept the feature fireplace, it looks lovely. Now you can see the front room, so we've got some books there, we've kept the fireplace again, the TV, the sofas, you've got the kitchen, Kitchen. Now in the kitchen, you've got the bottle of champagne, the strawberries, you've got the guest pack welcome, and you can see it just looks nice, doesn't it? We've put a lot of time and effort into really making this property look nice. You've got the upstairs bedroom, and you've got two beds, and you can see again, they're prepped, and they look really inviting and clean, don't they? Like you wanna stay here. There's a living room again, and look, we've taken pictures of the view. We've got bathroom, we've got one of the master bedrooms, but you can see how inviting and nice it is. Look at this, I love just doing this. This is a kid's bedroom. So we showed guests that we leave the um, safety feature for the children. So if you've got little toddlers in bed, we all know that they roll over and fall out. So we're showing the kids stuff there and we've left lollies for them look, which looks really inviting. So you can see how we've made it and how we've staged that. Let's have a look at Oyster Catcher at the Bay because I weren't that keen on this first picture, but it might be the first picture. So let's go have a little look. So the Bay in Filey is like an exclusive holiday place. So that photo looks okay. I'm, I'm quite invited and I can see the sea. They've got all the lights on in the shot, so I can see that. I can see a radiator more than anything else and a bit of a table. I can see the wires where the um, the lamp is. Can you see that? All these little details put guests off. And now here comes the bed. Serviced accommodation, this is huge. They've got blue bedding 
blue stripy bedding. Now, guests like to see white bedding. They want to see clean. So that's why we always do white linen. And on the bottom, we put like um, nice blankets to really lighten it up. But I'm not that keen with that. Standard kitchen. I've got no champagne, no strawberries. I can't see myself in here cooking or enjoying it because they haven't staged it for me. But can you see what I mean? If you put those properties side by side, which one would you choose to stay at? Not knowing price yet, which one? So staging and getting the interior decorations right. And it's especially important when you have the photographer come to shoot. Now, a lot of people just go and take the photos themselves. I wouldn't. I would have a professional photographer come and stage your property for the day. So get champagne, get strawberries, get some cakes, properly stage it. Hi, tidy away any, any wires and make sure the photographer doesn't shoot any wires, any lamps, anything that's going to look untidy and make sure you get the best shots. And then make sure they're professionally edited to bring out the best in them because I guarantee you that if you do that, you will get more bookings and a higher nightly rate than not doing that. It's the little things that count. The other thing when you're, but you're doing your service accommodation is you need to think about all the extras you can put in place for people. We think about everything. So we leave for children, high chairs, potties, anything that we think they're going to need. We leave dog bowls out because we let dogs stay and we leave uh, poop bags. We've got games, books, we've got Xboxes with a few games there. So you need to think about what's going to take yours. And, and these don't cost a lot. These little bits really don't cost a lot. But if you think about the extra amount they're going to get you per night, it's really genius. So my top tip number two is your listing details. So many service accommodation operators still to this day don't accept dogs when a huge proportion of the UK population has dogs. So it seems mind blowing that you're gonna cut out so many people by not accepting dogs. What we do is we, we accept dogs, we have a damage clause, and we take extra money for allowing a dog. And I think we would take an extra 100 to 150 pounds per stay for the dog, just so we can do the advanced cleaning at the end. But these make the difference. Some other places as well say they're not child friendly. Again, huge proportions of the UK population have children. And I can remember when I was going away with my little children, you know, not having to cart the potties, the high chairs, you know, everything that you need for them in the car and it, it just being there was amazing. So just thinking about these little details and putting it in your listing details, say, hey, we accept dogs, you know, and we leave you some dog bowls, we leave you some stuff there. Or yeah, we're so child friendly, you get a high chair, booster chair, Potty, you know, plastic knives and forks, because that used to be a nightmare. Everywhere I used to go with my two, one of them would drop, drop like a mug or a glass cup because there was no plastic stuff there. But we put plastic stuff in. Again, it costs pennies really to do this, but it'll really enhance your listing and make somebody choose your property over somebody else's. The other biggest thing that is going to increase and boost your nightly bookings, your bookings, is having two main things. So many people, people filter at service accommodation by these two items. Can you guess what they are? One is a hot tub. People love having hot tubs because most people don't have a hot tub at home. It's not something that's, you know, in their garden. So they like going away and having a treat and having a hot tub. So if you can provide a hot tub, that would be awesome. The typical cost for a hot tub is between four and 10,000 pounds. They'll cost you about an extra 100, 150 pounds a month to run. However, you can get an extra 50 to 100 pounds per night extra income from having it there. So when you do the figures, it works it out. Also, people love wood burners and especially people that are traveling in the winter. So you know you have a peak season, which is your summer, which everybody wants to go. And winter is a little bit quieter. But to entice people to come, people love having a wood burner. And again, it's because a lot of people don't have it in their own homes. When they're going away or having a special treat or going away for a week, you know, taking the kids, just being able to have a wood burner there and all sit around the fire, it is something really nice. So really consider them two things for your listing or if you're setting up a new serviced accommodation, because they will absolutely help you boost your bookings. So my fourth tip for you is social media. So don't just let your listing sit on the online travel agents like booking.com, Airbnb, TripAdvisor. Get it on Facebook, get it on social. Everybody's on social, aren't they? So I have a Facebook page 
for my holiday cottage in Bakewell and I'm constantly posting and showing people and getting people excited about Bakewell because let's be honest people need to excite be excited about the location about your property but you need to give them the vision of what's going to happen when they're there what they're going to be able to do so come and have a little look at my page and I've been very imaginative how I've called my page. I've called it Holiday Home in Bakewell. So many people would have called it what the building's called. So my building's actually called All Saints View. But if I put All Saints View in, nobody knows it. Nobody's really gonna search it, only people stay in. But if I put Holiday Home in Bakewell, it's really easy searchable. So there you go, there's my uh, main post. Look, some champagne, because people that stay with me obviously you're going to have a nice time. But if you go down, look, I've been sharing posts from the local community going, we love Bakewell. Bakerwell's just opened up this weekend. The next post is, do you prefer to eat in or eat out when I'm on, on holiday? Bakewell's got a great variety. Eat in, and I've shown them my beautiful kitchen, my beautiful table, or you can eat out at the lovely restaurants. And then my last lot of pictures that I posted is the um, hot tub. And if you click on it, look, you can see the hot tub. I've got all the seating area and the cushions out. It's a blue, nice sunny day. There's the rest of the garden, there's a the view. So can you see that's what's gonna make people really want to come, so I'm setting it up. And I post this a lot of time, I get a lot of engagement and then I get inquiries through about people asking to book. Get on social media. Now if you can, I would run ads on social media. So I've got some Facebook ads running to my page to just get more people to see it. Because the thing is, when you've got a great holiday home or a great service accommodation and you want people to come, it's just getting people to know about it so I've sometimes run competitions on my page and you know everybody that shares and somebody gets a free night stay um, but it's all about getting that engagement and getting people to see it because I'm confident once people see it they'll want to go and stay and book there but it's just getting them to that point now top tip number five and this is your price price your holiday let too much and nobody's gonna book it you will get the odd last-minute bookings if you're the last one but you'll struggle price it too low your calendar will be full, but you won't actually make real money. So you need to get that sweet spot and you need to get it right. So what you want to do is you want to compare what you've got to what your competitors have got, and then you choose your price. And what you normally do is you make your price more expensive the longer in the future it is. So if I was pricing now for August, my prices would be super expensive. As you get nearer to August, you keep an eye. And if it's not get booking or not getting any interest, you might flex the prices. And normally two weeks before, because most people might book a week before, a lot of people aren't that um, organized. So normally two weeks before, you might drop the price if you haven't already got booked or you're waiting for a last minute booking. But you really want to get that sweet spot. So remember, too high and you price yourself out, nobody wants to stay too low and your calendar's booked you're like woohoo i'm booked every night actually i'm not making any money so you want to be in that sweet spot where you're getting a good amount of income but you're still getting the bookings you also want a different price for um season so summer compared to winter so my my one in bakewell will go from i think the cheapest we do is 250 pound a night and that's very midweek and you're talking towards the edge of the season we then go up to 450 500 pound a night and then my highest is probably 690 a night and then we come back to the winter again and we're probably going towards the low but you need to just understand what your current what the market's doing in the area that you've got your serviced accommodation and fix your pricing so it's right um, there's loads of knowledge and education we can help you with fixing pricing there's loads out there and we do a full course on just getting your pricing model right crunching your numbers working out what your break-even point is so it's well worth making sure you understand that so you can price right so last one I want, I want to talk to you about is outsourcing versus is you doing everything. Now with service accommodation, you might want to outsource the marketing. So you have your property, you manage it and you manage the housekeepers, the cleaning, and you get somebody else to do the marketing for you. Now that somebody else can be Sykes Cottages, you can put it on booking.com, Airbnb yourself, and they will take a commission from you. And the rough estimate of commission they'll take is 20%, and you're still trying to manage the cleaners, run around and do everything. 
Or you can go to a specialist management agent, and I have pillow partners manage a lot of mine, where they will do everything for you. They'll do all the marketing, all the management, run around, all the cleaning, so you don't need to, they do it all. And again, they take a price for that. So it's working out what's gonna be best for you. Now, time is your most valuable asset. So for me, I outsource everything because my job is to build, to get more holiday homes. I don't be running around dealing with a holiday home. I wanna add more in, because the more I add in, the more money I make. Yeah, I don't wanna be saving on just, you know, the outsourcing because it's gonna save me some money here where my true ability is growing my business. But it depends what you want, because it can cost you. And it is, if you did your holiday home yourself, you did all the marketing, you just did some Facebook marketing and direct marketing, yeah, you could probably fill it and make a lot of money, but it's just what you're gonna do. Now, most people know booking.com, Airbnb, Sykes Cottages, cottages.com, they're sort of the biggie and they like to go to them because they trust them, you know, big brands. So you've got to factor that in as well. There's no right or wrong here. It's just what feels comfortable for you. Myself, I outsource everything and then I just play with my Facebook page and maybe run some ads from time to time if I want to boost it. But it's entirely up to you and what you like doing. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that's been useful. And if you're thinking about service accommodation, it is amazing strategy. Make sure you just don't jump in and go get a house. You need to understand the compliances behind service accommodation, the planning behind it. Um, planning, I mean compliance by local authority. Will the council let you run it? Does your insurance allow it? Your mortgage, etc., etc. There's so much more to learn. And I've given you a very brief overview of the pricing and the strategy uh, today. So if you're interested, go find out more, get educated, and then you know what you're doing with how to boost your bookings. But if you're already an SA operator, have a great time. And I hope these have been useful. If you haven't already, Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and tell me what you think. Tell me your experiences. Tell me if you're getting, you know, amazing nightly rates and what you're doing. I'd love to hear from you. And I will see you next week. Take care.